Hi there, my name is Lisa Bentley. I'm an 11 time Ironman champion, but I'm just like all of you. I started as a runner. I'm a runner at heart. I've run 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon. And so like you, I want to get the most out of my performance. Your training's mainly done and you've got a certain physical edge, but we can elevate your ability, your talent, your training to another level by focusing on some of the mental preparation tools that I used and still use uh, when I was racing. This just elevates your game to a whole new level without having to do any more physical work, but it all comes from up here. So what I want you to start doing, especially when you hit taper week and you're itching to get out for a run, is I want you to lay in bed for an extra 10 to 15 minutes and I want you to visualize your race. I want you to go through the entire race process, pre-race, lining up for the start, doing your warm up, those pre-race jitters. I want you to visualize yourself at 1K, 3K, 5K, starts getting hard. I want you to visualize yourself running smoothly. I want you to see yourself as your favorite runner, as the best runner. I want you to only see success, see yourself having a good rhythm and good turnover. I want you to visualize every kilometer of your race, when it gets hard, when it gets difficult. I want you to see yourself digging in and getting empowered and reminding yourself of your best, best workouts. Think about the difficult times, but make those your favorite moments. If there's a particular part of the course that's challenging for you, I want you to love that part of the course. I want you to embrace that part of the course and see yourself running fluidly through that area. Now we go through that whole visualization, but, and I want you to see yourself as the best runner, but I also want you to be realistic. I want you to plan, plan A, plan B, plan C. What happens if X, Y, and Z happen? If we can pre-plan it when we're sitting around laying in bed with our heart rate at 50, 60, 70 beats per minute, we're a lot better able to come up with a plan rather than when our heart rate's 140, 150, 160 beats per minute. So think about your plan A, plan B, plan C. What if you lose some nutrition? What if you run out of energy? What are you gonna do? You're gonna walk a little bit. You're gonna get some hydration. You're gonna get some calories. What if my Achilles starts hurting? Well, you might need to walk for a little bit. You might need to alter to a walk-run program. The goal is to get to that finish line without hurting yourself, but in a position to be the best that you can be. So we visualize, we see ourselves being perfect. We see ourselves performing like our favorite runner. There's no point in seeing yourself plod along. The work's done, your skill set's there. So see yourself being absolutely brilliant, but also plan for the curveballs. Have a plan A, plan B, plan C. I also want you to make a list of all your assets. List your best workouts, list everything you have going for you. And this is really important. I did this before every race and this gave me power. I'd remember my best workouts, how I felt during them, but I'd also think about things like I'm loved, I'm educated, I can problem solve. That's key. If you can remind yourself that you're a great problem solver, when you get out there in the middle of the race and it feels like everything's stacked against you, you can remember that you're a problem solver and you can figure it out. Remind yourself of all the things that you have going for you, not just the training, but the things that are instrumental to making you, you. And so when you hit that rough patch, you pull out this list of your assets and you remind yourself that you've got far more going for you than against you. So lift yourself up by remembering your assets and all the reasons why you will be successful. I also want you to come up with a theme for your race, your mission statement, your mantra. Now this isn't, I'm going to qualify for Boston. That's not a theme. Your theme is something that takes your mind away from the difficulty of the event and instead focuses on the process, putting one foot in front of the other. I remember one year at the Hawaii Ironman, my theme was love. That I was gonna love everything. I was gonna love the wind, the heat, the competition, the stress. I was gonna love everything. I was gonna play. I was gonna play if it was windy. I was gonna play as if I was swimming in the waves. When it got difficult, I would say that I loved that. And so I took that theme with me. So there was not one time that I focused on, wow, this is a long race. I focused on, wow, 
I love everything about today. And the reason I chose that theme at that particular day was because it was my first wedding anniversary. So I let it be my theme. And ironically on that day, it was windy, it was crazy. And I just kept going back to the idea of, I love, I love what I'm doing. Come up with a theme for your race. There was one year at Ironman Canada, my theme was one step at a time, one telephone pole at a time, one mile at a time. I chose that as my theme because I had been going into the race with an Achilles injury and I wasn't able to prepare as much volume as normal, but I had to take my training that I had. And so I elevated my game by focusing on one step at a time, one telephone pole at a time, one mile at a time. Through the whole race, I repeated that to myself. Those are the words of Terry Fox. And so when I'm trudging along there in Ironman Canada and I don't feel great and my Achilles is sore and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how am I gonna get to the finish line? My long run was only 90 minutes. This is a marathon. I'd remember that theme. Lisa, just take one step at a time one telephone pole at a time, one mile at a time. Terry Fox, 18 years old, he did it on a poorly fitted prosthetic leg before it was glamorous to do things for charity. Clearly you can handle this. You only have to one, run one marathon. He ran and attempted to run all across the country. So come up with that theme so that you can take your vision away from the difficulty of the event and instead focus on the process of getting to the finish line process and progress rather than perfection. There's only one way to be perfect, but there are thousands of ways to be great. And that's what we want to do is we want to be great. I also want you to come up with some mental cues for your race. So you're running along. The last thing I want you to be thinking about is I want this to be over. This is brutal. I don't like this. And, and trust me, there's going to be moments where you are not going to want to keep going but you've got to come up with mental cues that keep you on task. So for me, they were things like, if I can see her, I can catch her. I see victory, I will get victory. Now, victory doesn't mean crossing the finish line first. It means getting to that finish line. It means doing the best that you can. If I see victory, I'll get victory. Uh, anyone can do good when the going is good. A true champion finds success in adversity. That's a great mental cue so that you realize, hey, when it's tough, that's when I shine. That's when I can really use my mental power to assist with the physical power. Another mental cue I used a lot was attitude is more important than fact. Whatever fact is facing you is not nearly as important as your attitude. So the fact is, you might've had to walk a little tiny bit. You might've had to slow down, but your attitude is I'm going to reset. I'm going to regroup and I'm going to get back to getting to that finish line. It might not be as fast as I like, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to love this one step at a time, one telephone pole at a time, one mile at a time. And one of my favorite mental cues, which I said a lot to myself was this one, finish what you start and do it with heart. The goal is to finish, to do the best you can with what you've got. And along the road to the race day, you may have incurred a couple of injuries. Maybe you're not feeling 100%. Maybe you're under the weather. That's your deck of cards. That's what you got. So take it and go with it. And no regrets. You decided to get on that start line. So take you and your bad Achilles or your chest infection or whatever it happens to be and be the best you can be with those deck of cards. Maybe it's not going to be the PB you wanted, but it's going to be a PB for somebody who has an injury or an illness or isn't quite all there. So be the best that you can be. Be your own biggest fan. And when you can be your own biggest fan, then you can really enjoy the whole process and the joy of getting to run with all those runners in Toronto, in downtown Toronto. Of course, external goals are part of it. You might have a time goal, you might have a pace goal, but that is secondary to your internal goal, which is the fulfillment goal. It's to run with pride, to run with good posture, to keep your legs turning over, to smile. Those are our internal goals, which we need, to, we need to have just as much as those time goals. Focus on the process. Really, Terry Fox does say it best. One step at a time, one telephone pole at a time, one mile at a time. So make your list of assets, 
find your theme, hold on to that, lay in bed and visualize all parts of the race from start to finish, come up with your plan A, plan B, plan C, find those mental cues that can keep you going and get your fans out there to say those mental cues to you as well. Almost there isn't a great mental cue because you don't want this race to end. You want it to keep on going and feel the joy and the power of your body and mind. These mental tips are going to help you elevate your talent and training to a whole new level. Love that you get to race the Toronto Waterfront Marathon. Love that you get to do it. Celebrate it. It's a gift. I wish you all the very best physical, mental luck, and I'll see you out there.